everyone, welcome to part three of my solo Congo campaign. Um, right now, after the uh, last scenario, the second scenario, um, I completed the logs and so on for both the uh, principal characters, uh, the Dewa, the Witch Doctor and Mary Kingsley, the Explorer. Um, what I neglected to do though is that Mary's side um, actually uh, dispatched three hyenas so there are there is a record of that kept here and you score one point um, it's not terribly significant but it's worth it's worth doing so I'm just going to circle that retrospectively to say that they have a hyena hunting trophy um, it's also worth noting now, I hadn't spotted this before, but now that um, Mary has acquired two domains of knowledge, um, her character actually uh, improves in terms of attributes and so on. She becomes a, a two-star character and that gives her also um, some extra ability, uh, D6 uh, abilities in... Uh, shooting I believe if I remember correctly and her bravery goes up to d8 from d6 um, one thing that uh, I only spotted afterwards as well um, which doesn't make a huge difference um, but I should have been playing the last scenario under night conditions which would have reduced uh, visibility ranges and so on um, but it was it, the mistake um, was equal for both sides so um, I'll just have to remember that in future if I ever, ever play it again. Now um, we are going on now to travelling on to the next journeying to the next adventure and um, Mary as the winner of the last game gets to choose her route and I've been studying the routes a little bit more carefully and I think um, I'm going to ask, or not ask, I'm going to uh, opt for Through the Thriving Jungle. Um, the reason being there's a possibility of um, acquiring some bearers and acquiring some medicinal plants which might help her state of health improve um, because she was poorly from the uh, first encounter um, and this could this could um, take her back to a healthy state. So through the thriving jungle, Mary, <coughs> excuse me, Mary rolls a d8. Right, success because uh, it's more than five. A success means that the journey takes three months. So this is a slower route than the way she took before, but less perilous. So we cross off. Excuse me for banging the camera. Another three months there. Um, and then random events. Roll another d8. I only rolled a one. Um, you lose your way, but not for long. At the beginning of the next adventure, draw one extra totem card. So not uh, the outcome we were after. And I'll make a note of that here. <clears throat> right now, on to a Jewer, the witch doctor. He can choose one of the other two routes and um, I think I'm going to go for the over swift water, the most perilous route uh, because for him it has um, 
more advantages. So we roll 1d6, 3, uh, so that's a failure. Um, so it says, if a success is obtained, tick off two boxes on the spiritual link track, otherwise tick off only one box. So all the other routes, this is why I chose this, so he, he gets he gets a, a tick there. All the other routes actually involve him striking off, so in other words, erasing. So the, the over swift water is the only way that um, during the adventuring, journeying between the adventures, that he can actually increase this. The other way is to successfully perform rituals during the game. Okay, now there's the random element to this. So for the random event, we roll a d8. We only roll a 2. So, ah oh dear, this is the same that's happened to Mary um, in the last scenario. Cannibals have attacked your camp. They have carried off one of your auxiliaries, strike him off your travel lodge. Travel log. Travel lodge. So, that means that the sacred warrior um, is removed from jewers column and that's all the preparation that we're doing we're now on to the third scenario itself this is the table set up then for scenario number three um, the name of which is awaiting for the bell azure um, now this uh, as you can see features the edge of the table being a river. Um, I've placed a steamboat representing the bell as a, on the table. It's not necessary, but I've got the model, so I thought I might as well put it there. Um, and I've also, as you can tell, cluttered the table with a lot of terrain, which isn't actually required, but um, this is the first of the three of the six uh, scenarios which features jungle terrain and the main element of that is uh, six areas of dangerous terrain which are mangrove swamps. So I've had to kind of stretch my um, stock of scenery a little bit to provide areas that look swampy. So I've got two areas uh, down this end that are just meant to be marshy kind of areas. They're not necessarily Afri set in Africa, but uh, they, were, they are going to have to do. Then I have two areas uh, that I purchased a long time ago, which are ideal for um, jungly type swamps. And then I'm going to have to make do with two other areas um, that I put together for Saga. Um, so again, they're more sort of European looking, but they're going to have to do. Um, so th there are six of those, and as you saw, each one has a discovery um, token in them. Four, four are discoveries and two of them are going to be uh, sort of mishaps, bad luck. And then, as I say, I've cluttered the rest of the table with um, as many kind of jungle type trees that I can find. And I think I am going to actually um, incorporate them into the game, not just have them there decoratively. I'm going to make them, every single one of them, um, dangerous terrain areas um, and the only um, <coughs> excuse me the only um, alteration I'm going to make to the rules is that there will, there will be another wild animal this time it's a hippopotamus um, but if the, if his token is drawn um, it's only going to be allowed um, to place him in one of the six 
swampy areas so in other words um, it would make it harder for the person placing him to uh, um, place him in an area that's adjacent to uh, one of the opponent's groups and um, the purpose of this game is that Mary or the objective of the game is that Mary Kingsley there um, has come across a key where the bell is, uh, is likely to um, pull up and then she can use it to uh, proceed on further on her journey. <clears throat> um, there are two other keys, one here and one here. <clears throat> And if she can gain control of them, or but basically you're in control of them if you're within short movement distance of them at the end of the turn, and the opponent doesn't have any groups in short distance of them as well, um, then you keep a score. You roll a dice, and you keep a score, um, and a running total. And at the end of the uh, end of the game, that running total translates into victory points. Um, so the rest of Mary's group column start off up this end of the table and the entire um, group of Ijawa's figures start off there and there's also there's a lot more um, <coughs> rules, spe rules specific to the scenario which um, I'll go into later, but the there's a possibility of crocodiles um, appearing in these swampy areas. There's a possibility that they will turn into quicksand or turn out to be quicksand, um, making it um, you know adding to the perils. And also uh, there are two, at least two. Uh, items taken from the main campaign book one of which is that in several of the turns there is going to be a downpour um, so uh, that makes it harder to f fire weapons and reduces the range of visibility and the other one is there is another one it slipped my mind for the moment um, Yeah, there's the hippopotamus, which uh, which um, is probably what I'm thinking of, um, which has some specific rules, but that's taken from the um, campaign book. Yeah, so there, there is another one. This is why it's going to be quite hard to uh, keep track of everything, you know, that's going on in this game. Um, I'll have to refresh my mind. But anyway, um, I've dealt the cards already. Um, so, uh, a Jew has got two totem cards and he's picked those. He could have had a third one, but he chose to change one of these. Um, whereas on Mary's side, um, Mary now has an extra star, which is why a Jew had got on a, you know, a, um, an additional totem card because he has now got fewer stars to his character. But on the other hand, Mary chose, um, she had a free one from the uh, preamble. Uh, she gets one automatically and she got a third one because she was content with these three cards that were dealt her. Um, and off now into part, phase one of turn one. Okay, I'll just show you the uh, end of phase one of turn one then. Um, because I've just remembered that other rule uh, that's specific to this scenario. Um, so as you can see, I put a marker down here and that's because um, this mangrove swamp turned out to be quicksand as well. Um, that's going to have an effect on uh, movement from now on of any group that goes in here um, in that uh, you pick up a stress token um, you can't, each time you move, you can't pick up the pace though, so you move quite slowly through it and for every stress token you have, um, you have to roll to see if um, 
you get another stress token and uh, you also risk losing figures if you roll one on a d6 so it's quite it's going to be quite hard tracking through that now um, obviously though once that group have picked up they haven't quite reached the token yet but once the token has been identified there's no real reason for any other group to go in there now um, the actual rule that I just remembered is that um, for any melee that a Dewar's side wins um, you deduct two points from the, the running total that Mary will acquire for being in control of the keys at the end of each turn um, so that kind of balances it out a little bit and um, in what's happened so far in this phase is that uh, that group of with the reporter the young warriors moved into that swamp but failed then to inflict a terror attack on this group of scouts who have now moved into this um, area i suppose i should have rolled to see what this is actually i'll do that in a moment um, they don't roll on the dangerous terrain table oh and that's the other thing i forgot to do is roll on the see what i mean i forgot to roll on the dangerous terrain table for them so i'll do that now as well um, but quite a lot of groups on this side moved by using additional actions and the drum um, talking drum there which had to pick up a stress token um, so a little bit more achieved by a Jewer's side but I'll do those dice rolls off camera now to identify um, what kind of swamp that is and also the dangerous terrain table for the reporter okay so the results of the rolls were that this group on the dangerous terrain table rolled that they had passed through a disease-ridden village and they had the choice of either fleeing or um, picking up two stress tokens so i went for two stress tokens now one of them is a movement stress token so i think that um, because this is quicksand um, and they can't pick up the pace in it i think that has the effect of preventing them from moving at all so they're going to have to rally that off before they can get moving again um, which is a nice kind of effect by the way because it does make the quicksand very difficult to negotiate over here uh, Juba's group had a little bit more success though um, they rolled a six and it, so it turned out that this area was clear and allowed them to pick up a totem card as well um, any other groups entering that won't pick up totem cards but um, they now know that this is clear of being in quicksand um, which is really the function of scouts isn't it so um, that worked out quite nicely for them so now I can move on to phase two of turn one right so in phase two of turn one the Dewa played these three cards um, allowing him to move these bundukis to here and also his pygmy archers the two groups of three one move there and the other moved into this dangerous terrain where they were attacked by a family of hippopotami but won the melee so um, that doesn't that isn't the same as a wild animal card it's just an effect on the dangerous terrain table so they got away with that um, but don't get a tr hunting trophy for it um, the scouts uh, oh yeah I'll tell you about that in a moment um, the Jewers group here moved up to the token it turned out to be cursed um, rather than a discovery so they um, now at the end of every turn we'll have to roll a terror for a terror effect so they're carrying a curse around with them permanently now for the rest of the game um, that marker that is on them is the, re the result of um, Mary's play she chose to play these two cards here um, use this and one of those actions to rally off 
successfully the stress tokens that were on that group and then inflicted because uh, it was a black symbol she could inflict a terror effect and they failed the test so they now have a terror token terror stress token on them and she also tried on this group here but they passed the bravery test so that was the end of um, phase two of turn one end of turn one then uh, this group here have used the Kieran Goes's ability so they've got a stress token there now but they've moved up quite a long way and are close to entering this mangrove swamp here uh, a Jewers group um, because it's the end of the turn rolled for the curse and passed that successfully and uh, over here the Bundukis have moved into this mangrove swap here which turned out to be quicksand as well but they did turn up a discovery which is magical plants or what they regard as magical plants and the yeah that was it the other thing that failed to happen was the scouts attempted to roll off rally off that terror token and failed so that is the end of turn one situation at the end of phase one of turn two then um, adventurers there have moved up a little bit the reporter and his young warriors have uncovered artifacts with that discovery there but because they moved in quicksand now have a stress token uh, the group with the Kiran Gozi have moved to this key here whilst um, Mary is, is on her way up to try and move closer to this key here as is a Jewers group. Um, by the way at the end of the turn I rolled for the accumulating points for possessing a key and really poor roll. Mary only rolled one on a d6 so she's got one point so far. Uh, what else is happening? Uh, I think in this move, I can't remember now, I'm losing track, but the Bundukis have certainly turned up a discovery there, <coughs> um, magical plants, and the uh, scouts have used a totem card to get rid of the stress token that was on them there. And yeah, I think that is virtually everything that's happened in in that turn, in that phase rather. End of phase two of turn two. Uh, a Jewer's party has managed to reach the key. Uh, so he now controls that, but uh, Mary's group with the soldiers has moved up. Um, mainly because next turn we're aware that uh, the rain is going to begin and the range will drop so needed to get within uh, M of that group and able to use their rifles against them if they're going to do that that was my thinking and um, the pygmies have moved one group has moved into this dangerous terrain here um, they were plundered by local tribesmen um, obliging them to lose two totem cards but as they didn't have two totem cards to lose uh, Mary's group were allowed to pick one totem card up the other half of the group are over here and the adventurers have moved close to them as well um, so they'll be able to uh, exchange fire and arrows poison arrows next turn possibly and that was the end of that phase. End of phase two, turn two. Uh, lots happened here, although it's not so apparent. Um, 
the archers uh, really shot up Mary's group. Um, so they uh, drew lots of stress tokens um, in order to go to cover, go to ground. Um, still took one casualty, so there's now a Sikh soldier missing from that group. Um, but then in their turn, uh, had a rally action that successfully removed all four tokens. So all that's the final result of that was that um, they've only lost uh, one soldier. Actually, some of those stress tokens were the result of um, a Jew were successfully casting a ritual against them. Um, so he took the risk of drawing lots of stress tokens himself in order to make that successful. Um, and that is the reason why there's now a lot of stress tokens there. And uh, the in her turn, because the Jew went first, Mary actually used one... Yeah, sorry, beg your pardon. She, yeah, not that great, but she, that she, her side used one of the cut, one of the actions to inflict a terror attack on these guys, and the result of that was that they had to retreat as close as possible to the table edge as possible, and as they were already at the table edge, um, they lost the figure themselves as well. So quite a lot going on there. Uh, the other things that happened uh, were that the reporter there um, got rid of his stress token um, we're using a totem card which means he can now move a little bit more freely in that quicksand to try and get out of it so that was uh, quite an action packed phase two of turn two yeah my mistake that was actually the end of turn phase of turn two sorry f end of phase three of turn two so um the, as a result of this curse um this group here had to take another terror attack and uh drew two more stress tokens so again, they're over the limit, so they had to lose another figure as they can't get any closer to the edge of the table. So that curse is causing a real problem. It's not removable, so um, that's going to be their situation if they remain there every go for the rest of the turn. And um, yeah, because uh, this group are in control of this key, they rolled five on a d6, so they've actually accumulated another five points uh, towards the running total for Mary. End of phase one of turn three then. Um, the young warriors and reporter here fired at the pygmies in cover there and uh, failed to hit anything. Uh, this group here failed to rally off a stress token. Uh, the group of soldiers with Mary fired at the uh, Ajua's group to cause one casualty, <clears throat> and in their <coughs> excuse me, in their turn, um, the group sort of moved as far away as possible as they could get, get them out of peril, and uh, there was also movement from this group of pygmies here. Uh, this group of warriors here who've now moved into this area which turns out to be quicksand um, haven't quite reached the token yet and the bundukis have moved out of this area of quicksand um, oh, sh oh, yeah oh no they don't need a stress token they could only they, they could only move one short distance though um, weren't able to pick up the pace because they were in there um, so they're now out of the quicksand and I'll probably move them over to this area to investigate. And that was everything, I believe, in that part of the turn. And turn phase, phase, sorry, end of phase two, turn three, 
And I forgot to say before, but I didn't forget to implement it, that um, turns three and four, there's actually a downpour going on, which is we reduce the ranges of uh, missiles down to M, maximum of M. Um, there's an awful lot in this scenario uh, that you have to keep track of and, and keep remembering. So um, that's part of the problem playing solo, that if there's two of you playing, you can remind one another. Um, so apologies if I do forget any of the rules, but I think I'm keeping abreast of it at the moment. But anyway, the pygmies in this turn, in this phase, fired at the uh, reporter and his young warriors and managed to kill two of them. Uh, they weren't successful in their saving throws. Um, the uh, other group here that were in trouble managed to rally off two of their stress tokens but then had another one inflicted on them um, with an influence card and um, that was everything that oh yeah the um, sorcery card was played as well by Uju where he successfully uh, drew another totem card so that uh, that will help him in his campaign um, over here one of the, Mary played this card, so three influences, so she managed to put a stress token on a Dewar, failed to take one off of here, and failed to put one on there. Um, so that is the end of that phase. End of turn three, and this group here have successfully rallied off their stress tokens. Uh, Mary's group has moved up and is now in possession of this key as well. That has resulted in another seven accumulated points for controlling two of the keys at the end of uh, turn three. This one you just roll a d6. This one you, add, you roll a d6 and add two, so seven seven more so they're now up to 13 um, and Jewel's group has successfully rallied off all its uh, stress tokens and also uh, passed the terror test uh, as a result of carrying around this curse and this group of Bundukis has moved very close now to this uh, mangrove swamp here so we'll be able to probably explore that in the next turn in which I must remember as well that there is also a downpour of rain um, affecting ranges and visibility in the next turn as well. Okay, um, end of phase one of turn four, I believe, yep. And um, these two groups have fired on the pygmies, uh, leaving only one pygmy and the pygmy king alive there. Um, over here, this group of pygmies also lost one figure as a result of firing from there. And then an additional card was played so that the uh, Ascaris here with the Kirangozi have moved up to here vacating this key which I'm hoping this group of uh, Raga Raga will reach um, by the end of the uh, turn four so uh, we still have two keys occupied and the uh, Feist tribes um, made a slight mistake here but it's not going to change anything the Bunduk is moved into this area um, turned up the token number three, so another discovery, um, identified it as being more quicksand, but then on the dangerous terrain table it said that they'd discovered human remains and were too scared to enter the dangerous terrain. So I think effectively all that does is um, require them to make another movement next turn and nothing else is in the vicinity. So. I left them, uh, I left it as that. And here, this group um, turned up this token, um, got a stress marker for moving in quicksand, 
and have also picked up another curse which is that in any melee that takes place for the rest of the game one of their group is going to be unfit to uh, to fight. End of phase two of turn four, the group of warriors there have been able to remove a stress marker, um, move these bunduckies into position there so those uh, fines uh, stand from the phase before. Um, the uh, soldiers here and the pygmies have been exchanging arrows and gunshot and it's resulted in one soldier being killed and one pygmy being killed. So there's only a single pygmy left there now. Uh, this group of young warriors have finally started moving. So uh, I'm going to move them into this area here. Now that we know it's um, safe, uh, not safe, but it's not uh, quicksand. Um, it is still dangerous terrain. So you'll have to leave the scouts there for the time being to allow them to move in without incident. Um, but they are the scouts are now quite close to this final area here to uncover what uh, that token is and uh, to discover what kind of terrain it is. And the Rugga Rugga have got to this uh, key here. So we're back now to Mary's side controlling two of the keys. And I think that was everything that happened in that phase. End of turn four and these Bundukis have managed to leave the quicksand um, they're quite close to this key now so they're denying it to mary's group who are heading towards it um, being shot at by these chaps here who missed fortunately uh, these uh, ascari are now in control of this key um, so it was the end of the turn um, so that group who are carrying the curse around picked up another stress marker as a result of the curse and uh, this group here, Rugga Rugga, um, being in possession of that key has resulted in another um, quite considerable number, I forget, I think it's about 11, so Mary is now up to <coughs> 24 objective points um, which is going to give her 10 victory points and a Dewa only 5 in terms of possession of the key. Uh, there's still two turns to go and um, the fifth turn has a downpour as well um, and unlike the previous two scenarios the sixth turn is played to completion um, so there are two full turns still to go to battle over this uh, remaining key here. So at the end of phase one of turn five, the only real action took place here. Um, Mary's group attacked the Bunduki um, and she has this pacifist ability which reduced the number of bundukis able to fight by one. Um, the soldiers inevitably won the melee. Um, Mary herself now has a combat ability as, she, as her character has gained an experience during the campaign. Um, so they pushed the bunduki back who then uh, fired musketry at them back um, inflicting a terror marker because it was muskets being fired but nothing else um, no hits or anything like that so um, Mary definitely came off better in that exchange because she's now within short distance of the key um, and if she can get rid of these guys who are also within short distance then it means She's controlling the third and final key. Okay, so in this part of the turn, phase two of turn five, the adventurers decided they were going to try and take on the uh, 
two pygmies there and came off the worst for wear mainly because the pig, pygmy king has got a combat value of d10 um, so they inflicted two casualties on the three adventurers um, whereas the uh, sorry two hits rather on the three adventurers whereas the adventurers got none um, that meant that the um, adventurers should have taken off two figures but they only took off one and took two tokens instead uh, and they were supposed I'll just do that now try and, try and get it out of the bag with my left hand yeah they took another stress for taking part in the combat and the pygmies got one stress for taking part in the combat so um, pygmies definitely they're small but, but lethal and um, over here, the young warriors have advanced a little bit further. Um, so that will now free up the scouts to come across to here. Uh, the Ascaris fired at the uh, archers here. It didn't inflict any kills, but being musketry, they picked up a stress token. And uh, over here, the warriors used um, a totem card to extend their movement so they were able to get out of the uh, um, quicksand and now have a panic token as a result. Um, but they are beginning to threaten the uh, group of soldiers there. So um, the contesting this key here is still an issue really. And now we're on to the final part of turn five. Okay, so the reporter and the warriors there um, attacked the Pygmy King and the remaining archer. Didn't manage to inflict any casualties, but they did uh, push them back. Um, here the uh, scouts have, uh, have uh, reached that discovery, which they regard as remains. Um, this area turned out to also be quicksand so it does mean unfortunately all six areas have been explored now so there isn't going to be any crocodile infested swamps which is a bit of a shame I wanted to try the crocodiles out and up this end um, the Zaskari attacked that group and again similar result didn't manage to uh, inflict any casualties but just push them back a little bit more um, so now we're on to the final phase of turn five sorry sorry that was the final phase of turn five i've just played so um inflicted the curse again on these chaps and uh, they survived and totted up some more objective points um, this key here is still contested because there are two groups and there's an enemy group within short of it um, but this Mary's column scored more points for this group this key and this key um, still not up to the point where all the victory points will go to her side though um, a couple more objective points to get before she achieves that so now we're on to turn six the final turn and the downpour of rain has finished right well the most dramatic thing that happened in that phase was that uh, the young warriors with the reporter attacked the pygmies again and wiped them out absolutely obliterated them um, so that's been very worthwhile actually uh, bumping up their experience um, so that they had d8 fighting capability that's paid off because they've now killed one of the characters which is going to be more victory points um, over here uh, the Ruga Ruga fired their muskets at the scouts and killed one of them um, the most dramatic thing that happened over here was that uh, a Jewer tried to cast a ritual and failed because he picked up a a stress a panic stress token um, so rather than dying himself uh, he sacrificed another member of his group 
Um, so that was a, a risk worth taking in the final turn of the game. Try and bump up the number of his uh, successes at Rituals. Um, it didn't pay off. And over here, I think all I did was rally off. Uh, uh, oh no, I took it off with a totem card, the stress token that they had. So this key here is still contested. Um, but the other two are still possessed by Mary Kingsley's column. So now on to phase two of turn six. Right, at the end of phase two of the last turn, the reporter with his warriors has moved a little bit further. Um, he's hampered by the movement stress token, so couldn't move very far. But I didn't want to move any of the groups close to the keys. However, um, the forest tribes Young warriors here have managed to get now within short distance of the key, so that is contested at the moment. I can't see any way that they will be shifted in one more phase. Um, anyway, we'll have to work that out. Um, the warriors here threw multiple spears at Mary and her soldiers, um, who were obliged to um, go to ground in order to try and survive that and they did so but at the expense of um, drawing a panic stress token which means they're going to be inactive for the final phase and that's what we're going to play now. Right the game is over um, just give you a little brief overview of the table before I tot up all the points and so on. Um, <clears throat> so over here, um, Mary's group were under threat really, and they were attacked in melee by both this group, which came off worse, as you can see, and this group, which actually, um, it was rolling 2d6 against 2d10s there, <coughs> and um, managed a draw which meant that they were pushed back so that they so that this group is now in control of the key and Mary is not anywhere near it or not near enough to it um, by the way I forgot to say earlier that um, when she originally won the melee um, against these bundukis right at the start um, it did mean that she picked up the two tokens that they were carrying. I forgot to point that out. Um, a similar thing happened over here um, in that that group there were pushed back by this group here. Both sides had to pick up a stress token and as you can see um, one of the stress tokens was the wild animal. So right at the end of the game, the hippo came on the table um, and unfortunately it was the forest tribes putting it down and you have to put it in, I, d I did say at the beginning that it would have to go in one of the six swamp areas um, and you have to put the wild animal down in an area that isn't occupied. So there were two swamps that weren't actually occupied, one of them the hippo would have posed more of a threat to the forest tribes than to the uh, white men exped expedition. So I put it over here and um, it was able to charge because it was in this empty area, but it was able to charge into that area there and um, squash one of the other adventurers, but not a game changing event. but. Um, you know, as in the first scenario, it's a bit of a pity that because the wild animals are quite interesting, a bit of a pity that it turned up right at the end of the game. But anyway, there we are. Um, so, in terms of the objective points, um, Mary's now got up to 40, which gives her 15 victory points in the, in the game. And um, as I say, I'm just going to tot all that up now and give you a, 
a final summary of where things are in the campaign so far. Right then, so once again, Mary won that game hands down. Um, her running total for the objective points was 38 because uh, she'd scored 40 but then lost two for the one melee that um, the Jewers side actually won when the Pygmies uh, defeated the Adventurers but apart from that all the melees were draws um, so she ended up with a running total of 38 and once you're over 36 that gives 15 victory points to Mary and zero to Ajua. So she got 15 victory points for that. Um, you get four victory points for each discovery made. And Ajua's side had one discovery, but Mary's had 12 in their possession. Um, two of those having been won in melee, by the way. So um, Ajua did all the hard work of finding them and then Mary stole them off him in melee um, so she got 12 victory points for that due with four and then um, the pygmy king was killed so you roll two d8 for each sorry you roll yeah a d8 you roll a d8 for each star of the character and the pygmy king is a two star character um, so i've done that already and you've got two successes and for each success you get two points so another four victory points so Mary ended up on 31 victory points and a Jew were only four. So without any question of doubt, we can circle that Mary won that adventure. Now, in terms of the discoveries, um, a Jewer's side ended up with discovery number one, um, which is remains. can tick or cross off remains there. Um, Mary had the other three which are Flora which didn't have before, another geology. So now this is going to give her a talent in the next game and artifacts as well. So that's a second talent that she'll be able to use in the next game. So those talents are um, exchange, which you can only use once per adventure, and adventure is a game. Um, exchange an action card you are holding for an action card you did not choose during this action phase. Um, and the other, so that that you could do that um, halfway through a turn, which might be quite handy if if a situation arises you don't have a card to deal with it. And then the other one is uh, replace only once per adventure a stress token just drawn by drawing another one. The stress token initially drawn is returned to the bag. So again, that could be quite handy if you drew a panic token or something like that and you wanted to carry on playing, you could put it back in the bag and draw another one. Um, so that's the discoveries. Then um, because when the game comes to an end, it says the player who controls the largest number of keys is rewarded with knowledge in one domain of his or her choice. So Mary had two keys under her control and a Jew only one. So she gets to pick another domain of knowledge. So we're just going to carry on down the list in order. So she's now got the knowledge of leadership as well. Um, and that's everything, I think, in terms of filling out the log for Mary at this time. And as we've seen, I've already, the only thing that you can tick off is the remains there. So now we go on to the experience gained. Right, the winner rolls 1d10. So this is a roll for Mary. 
first, <coughs> excuse me, first of all, she rolls a six. Choose one of your characters. He acquires d6 in a zero value characteristic of your choice. Okay. So. Uh, she has three characters and only one of them has a zero um, combat, the zero d6 value, and that's combat for the reporter. So the reporter here um, is now d6 combat. And in combination with the uh, buffs that the young warriors that I'm putting in with. He doesn't have to go with the young warriors each time, but that will actually add to the power of that group. So that's it's worth maintaining that um, combination of the reporter with the young warriors because they're quite a powerful force now. Uh, <coughs> uh, Right, so now a Jewa rolls just a d6, and he rolls a 1, and it says, No bonus, apparently you have learned little from your recent trials and tribulations. So it just goes from bad to worse for a Jewa. And I think that is everything. Um, so I, I found, I, I enjoyed playing that game, but I did find there was a lot um, that you had to keep considering lots of special rules for the scenario and so on um, so I hope you enjoyed watching it and I didn't make too many mistakes and um, I'll do the journey on to the next adventure as the preamble for the next uh, episode in this uh, campaign of Mary Kingsley in darkest Africa thanks very much for watching again see you on the next video Yep, sorry, there was one thing I'd forgotten to do for a Jew. Uh, during that game, he successfully performed five, well, he had five ritual successes. Some of them were combinations in one action. So I can now tick off one, two, three, four, five there. So he gets one, <laughs> one point for that so far. Sorry about that.